When we last left off, Tiglath Pileas III of Assyria had conquered Aram Damascus and the land of Israel east of the Jordan and north of the valley of Jezreel. Hoshea had been placed on the throne of Israel by Tiglath and the kingdom of Israel had become a puppet state for Assyria. Years passed and Tiglath Pileas III died and was succeeded by his son, Shalmanazar V. Hello, I'm your host, Knight Jake, and welcome to Bible Wars. In the year 732 BC, Hoshea the son of Elah began to rule over Israel. He had usurped the throne from Bacar with the help of Tiglath Pileas III of Assyria. He had basically become a puppet king for Assyria, just as Ahaz of Judah had become. At this point in time, both Israel and Judah were puppet states for Assyria. Then, in 727 BC, Tiglath Pileas III, born Pul, Tiglath Pileas was his royal name, passed away and was succeeded by his son, Ulu Layu, who took the royal name Shalmanazar, becoming Shalmanazar V of Assyria. During his reign, Tiglath Pileas III had made many conquests and national reforms, which arguably revived Assyria's control over the Near East. The first of such reforms entailed thwarting the powers of the high Assyrian officials, which during the reign of his predecessors had become excessive. Officials such as Shamshai Ilu, who was a general and prominent official since the time of Tiglath's predecessor, Adad Nararai III, often led their own campaigns and erected their own commemorative monuments without mentioning anything to the king. From the beginning of his reign, Tiglath began the regular practice of appointing eunuchs as governors of the newly conquered provinces. This removed the threat of oppositional dynasties taking control of these provinces. He also sought to reduce the power of his officials by reducing the size of their provinces and decreasing their resources, just in case they had any desire to incite a revolt against him. Subsequently, there was more provinces, more governors, most of which were eunuchs, and less power per governor. The second reform of Tiglath targeted the army. Instead of a largely native Assyrian army, which normally could only campaign during the summertime, Tiglath Pileas incorporated large numbers of conquered people into his army, thus adding a substantial foreign element. These forces mainly comprised the light infantry, whereas the native Assyrians comprised the cavalry, heavy infantry and the charioteers. As a result of these military reforms, the Assyrian army was greatly expanded and could campaign throughout the entire year instead of just during summer. The addition of the cavalry and chariot contingencies to the Assyrian army was mostly due to incorporating captives from the horse-trading Euro-Asian steppe cultures, which sometimes invaded the northern colonies of the Assyrian Empire. Under the reign of Tiglath Pileas III, the Neo-Assyrian Kingdom had grown rapidly into the Assyrian Empire. Shalmanazar V, however, would not be as successful as his father. He spent most of his time fighting with Israel. He lost his influence in the Babylonian region of the Assyrian Empire, and upon his death the Babylonians broke off from the Assyrian Empire and established their own nation. For you see, Babylon had been conquered by Tiglath Pileas and brought into the Assyrian Empire as a new territory. But upon the death of Shalmaneser V in 722 BC, Babylon regained its independence under Marduk Apla in Dinah II, called Merodach Baladan in the Bible, who had allied himself with King Hezekiah of Judah. Babylon would remain independent for 12 years under Marduk's reign until the year of 710 BC, when King Sargon II, the brother and successor of Shalmaneser V, reconquered Babylon. Babylon would remain under Assyrian control, but would once again gain independence in the year 620 BC and finally conquer the Assyrians in 616 BC. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Getting back to the reign of Shalmaneser V, 
in the year 727 BC, upon his ascension, he sought to assert his control over Israel. He marched upon Israel. However, Hoshea paid him a tribute and cemented his loyalty to Assyria. But, in the year 725 BC, Hoshea sought to conspire against Assyria by allying himself with Egypt. If this had been a success, Egypt could have struck a powerful blow against the other superpower of the region, and Israel could have become a free nation, working alongside Egypt as allies rather than a puppet state. The prophet Hosea mentions Israel wishing to return to Egypt, thus referring to Hoshea's attempt to ally with Egypt. But Hosea 11.5 mentions that Israel shall not return to Egypt, but that Assyria shall be their king, referring to Hoshea's failed attempt to ally with Egypt, which would result in the Assyrian conquest. Technically, the second Assyrian conquest, since the first Assyrian conquest of Israel had taken place under the reign of Tiglath-Pileaz. Shalmaneser V was angered by Hoshea's betrayal and so he gathered his troops and marched towards Israel. Join us next time as Hoshea intercepts Shalmaneser at the Valley of Jezreel in a bloody battle. Thank you for watching this episode of Bible Wars. If you enjoy the Bible Wars YouTube series or any of the other work done by the Order of Knight George, you can support us by going over to our Patreon page. I'll leave a link to our Patreon page in the description below. Goodbye and God bless.